Greetings, Internet Drinking Buddies. My name is Link. The show's name is Tubbin and Chuggin. And on this episode, I'll be imbibing homemade apple cider. Welcome back to the tub, everybody. Now, when I said I was doing dry January, I was truthful, and I did not have a single drop of alcohol for all of January. However, alcohol was not entirely off my mind, because what I was doing was fermenting this bad boy. So I've been getting into the whole sort of concept of making your own alcohol at home, got some of the materials. What I'll do here is I'll briefly kind of go over that process, how it works, and we'll see how mine turned out. Getting into the sort of home brewing thing isn't as daunting as you might expect. You really only need a few s relatively cheap things to get. One of them is a, what they call a carboy, which is a gallon container in which you're going to be doing the fermenting. You need a little airlock in order to keep the pressure in there, allow the yeast to get um, going to actually ferment the drink, and obviously the yeast itself to turn your apple juice, your honey mead, your whatever, into the alcoholic version that you would like to do. There are additional things you can buy, like sort of specific gravity hydrometers in order to measure exactly what percentage alcohol you have. I haven't gotten that deep into it yet, I just want to sort of try it out. Sit my, sit my toe in the tub, as the kids might say. I don't know what kids would say that, but the idea being like, just sort of try it out, see how it goes. So with this one, the apple cider is actually very, very simple because there's only two ingredients, the apple juice and the yeast. You put them together in the carboy, you let that magic happen, you, yeast eats through all the sugar. I got some pictures of it here. The airlock keeps everything going and you can tell by the bubbles in the airlock when it's done. So when it is done, you then want to bottle it up into different things, although they recommend at this step tasting it to see how it feels and if you want to add in various like non-sugar sugar substitutes because if you add it in sugar these would just keep eating the sugar but if you add in something sweet like a xylitol or a stevia type thing you can increase the sweetness of it so i added a little bit of that just because the initial taste seemed a little just sort of dry to me but add a little bit of fake sugar in there let it get a little bit sweeter bottle it up let the bottle sit for a week or two and then we're ready to drink so place this bad boy in the refrigerator for basically overnight it should be nice and cold to drink so let's pop it open see how it did Oh boy. That's delicious. That's absolutely delicious. That is the Trader Joe's apple unfiltered apple juice that I got. I forget if they call it apple juice or apple cider. But basically you want the unfiltered. You want as much as that sediment in there as possible. Just so that the yeast can really work on something pure that hasn't already been, you know, artificially flavored with something else, like a fake apple kind of taste to it. This is obviously like more organic-y tasting apple juice than what you might be familiar with, like a Mott's or, or something like that, the, the really sweet ones. But that's what you want for the cider, the, the like, you know, as raw as it gets, let the yeast do its work on it, bottle it up and just taste it, I'm just, I, I need more. Very happy. I'm very happy with how it tastes. I'm very happy that I have six more bottles of this that I get to enjoy. Obviously not all at once, but the economics of making it, obviously there are startup costs involved to buying, you know, the the equipment to do it. But once you get there, it's basically, you're turning, you know, a non-alcoholic juice into an alcoholic juice. This came out at about six to seven percent if the recipe uh, I'm using has it accurate, just because it's all very simple ingredients. Again, when you get the more specific equipment, you can measure exactly like what percentage it's going to be. But I'm... It's pretty safe that it's around that edge just because of how simple, again, the, the recipe is. So pricing-wise, it comes out pretty decent, especially when you compare it to something like a, you know, a Reds or other sort of hard ciders that are out there on the market that you're paying a buck fifty a bottle for. So this is obviously, you know, well, it, it should be about a gallon in total that you're making because that's what you start with alcohol-wise. So I'll do the calculations here and see exactly how ahead I am on it, but, you know, I, I assume it's pretty good. Hey, so kind of weird, gonna interject this video for a little bit. As you can see, I've shaved. In between filming uh, this video of my homemade cider and now, uh, I received a gift. It is a Frankfurter apple vine, so like a German take on this sort of apple cider. This is, they call it a wine, but it's basically the same concept. This also comes in at 6%. Uh, this is a liter variation, but you can get it in a whole number of different sizes. So I want to give a little quick compare and contrast to what I made and what you can kind of get commercially, especially in Europe. So let's try it. Uh, 
Cheers. It is a very similar taste. That same kind of like sweetened apple, but not like overly sweet. A little bit bubbly, but not too bubbly. You know, just kind of like overall consistently apple flavory at 6%. I thought this might be like surprisingly better, maybe even worse if I'm being a little bit like overzealous on my newfound brewing characteristics, but this is like, I would do a taste test on this, honestly. It's pretty similar. It's maybe like a little bit sweeter, this one, than the one that I had, but I haven't had mine for like a week or so now, so it's not the most accurate kind of comparison, but overall very similar. Um, from what you can get from this and to what you can make from mine. So obviously check out my recipe if you want to brew it yourself. It's really not that difficult. And um, yeah, back to the original. And the cider itself is delicious. I'm really, really happy with how this turned out. I thought it would be like horrible tasting or mess something up in it. But it, yeah, pretty sure it worked because I saw the yeast doing its magic and the, uh, you know, the bubbles coming up. So overall, I'm pretty happy. Um, if there are any like sort of you know, homemade mead cider recipes that you've tried out or you think I should try out, let me know. Be happy to start brewing more of these because now that it's done, I, I gotta wait another few weeks before I can drink anything else from it. So, that'll be interesting. I forgot to say this, but please do drink responsibly, especially when you're making gallons worth of this stuff at home. <laughs>